people of God, welcome. Welcome to worship this day here at Christ the King Lutheran Church in Nashua, New Hampshire. We're glad that you're with us. Uh, today is a bit of a pivot, a transition day here at CTK. Um, since mid-March of 2019, we have been worshiping completely online. And today we start our outdoor summer worship service here in the parking lot just behind me. Um, each Sunday at 9.30 in the morning. So if you're in the area and you feel comfortable and safe uh, to join us, we will be socially distanced, we will still be masked, and we will be joining together in worship and we're really excited. We also know that um, for various reasons, whether you're on vacation or uh, you live a state or two away, because we know there are a handful of you that continue to worship with us each week, um, but don't live here in Nashua, um, or if you're still not yet feeling comfortable or safe in gathering together in large groups, we will continue this service online. We're going to modify it a little bit, um, and we're calling it the Simple Sunday Service. And what that really means is two things. One, um, we're not going to be singing music together. Um, there will be from time to time a postlude of a hymn or some music that has been recorded in advance um, that we will share at the end of the service, but for the most part it will just be spoken word. And then additionally it will just be you and I um, gathering together. Um, in our previous recordings, we have had other readers, other prayers um, join along with us. <laughs> and just for the ease and the time of our staff, um, we have chosen to simply um, have it with me and you a rather intimate time. So we're very glad that you are here. Each week, we invite you to go to our website and download the bulletin that you can find there uh, to use to enter into more fully into our worship time together. And we invite you to press pause and do that right now if you have not done so already. And now we will begin together after a brief moment of silence with confession and forgiveness. Mystic and teacher Julian of Norwich spoke these words of faith. All people who shall be saved, while we are in this world, have in us this marvelous mixture of both well-being and woe. We have in us our risen Lord. We have in us the misery and harm of humanity's falling and dying. We are steadfastly protected by Christ and by the touch of grace, we are raised into sure trust of salvation. And by humanity's fall, our perceptions are shattered in various ways, by sins and by sufferings that we are so blinded that we can hardly find comfort. In the strong assurance of pardon and grace, let us confess our sin before God together. Without your power, O oh God, we are lost. We have done things we would avoid, and what you desire we have not done. By your purifying fire, transform our lives. Guide us into honesty and compassion so that filled with your peace, our dreams and visions may be one with yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. By the power in whom we have life and move and have being, I pronounce to you the complete forgiveness of all of your sins through the Holy Trinity, one God, whose mercy is everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Holy One, who comes to us in breath, visits us from heaven and sets us aflame with amazement and joy. 
You open our paths to new visions and guide our feet deeper into your wisdom. Give us faith to trust your living and abiding presence in our midst through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading on this Pentecost Sunday comes from the book of Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all gathered in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Jesus, uh, but Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the first reading. The second reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 8. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Here ends the second reading. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th and 16th chapter. Jesus said, when the advocate comes whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who comes from the Father. She will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks, where are you going? 
But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send her to you. And when she comes, she will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because they do not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, she will guide you into all truth. For she will not speak on her own, but will speak whatever she hears, and she will declare to you the things that are to come. She will glorify me because she will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that what is mine, I said that she will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Now, I want to speak uh, directly and specifically to the youngest among us as we gather for a brief children's time today. Today is Pentecost Sunday, the day that we celebrate the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit coming into our lives as followers of Jesus, the Holy Spirit that equips us, that sends us out to be, to bear that light in the world. So I want you to think about ways that you can go out and share the love that you know, the love of Jesus that claims you, how you can share that with our world, our world that so desperately needs that. And I wanna give you one little simple idea. I bet somewhere around your house, uh, you have some sidewalk chalk. And if you don't, let me know and I will get you some. Um, but if you do have it right now, I would invite you um, over the next week to go out of your house find a sidewalk somewhere. Maybe it's your front steps. Maybe it's the end of your driveway. Maybe it's the gathered, the community area in your apartment complex. Um, maybe it's right in front of a mailbox so that your mail carrier can see it. But I want you to say a brief prayer and ask Holy Spirit, stir within me what you would have me proclaim to the world. And then I want you to draw a picture, write words that come to your heart they may be words of love or words of promise or hope or a picture that just brings a smile to someone who's having a really bad day. I invite you to share with the world the movement of the Spirit in your heart. Share it with your neighbor, share it with your family, share it with yourself. And know that all of us have been equipped to go out, to go out in the Spirit and share that light the light of the flame that we have gathered around, the light of the promise that has claimed you and I. If you do this, I invite you to snap a picture of it and either have one of your parents send it to me at, ctk, at pastor at ctknashua.org or go to Facebook and upload um, the picture there as well on our CTK page and let us share that uh, light of the spirit with the world and see how we are being equipped together. I look forward to seeing them. Poet John Birch writes, when was the last time we took you at your word and met together in expectation of your spirit filling this place and these lives with your glory and power? Friends, today is a new chapter a new start as we gather both in person today for the first time in over a year and continue with our Sunday service online. It has been over a year since we have been physically separated and for some of us, it will continue in order to keep ourselves, those we love and others safe. As our global family, um, we begin to understand and know the effects of the deadly virus of COVID-19 and begin to live into new ways to be together as things are beginning to open up. So it's fitting that today on Pentecost Sunday, we take the next step together 
in resuming in-person worship while maintaining an online service. With the wind swirling around us and flames of fire burning bright among us, friends, neighbors, and new faces gathered in one place right here. Just like those first disciples in the book of Acts, as we look to our first reading today, we see the disciples gathered together. They certainly were excited to be with one another, almost surely with some still not present, and yet a bit on the edge as well. A lot had happened. They had been following Jesus, who was arrested, crucified, and buried. And then he was raised, speaking and eating in their midst. And then just 10 days prior, Jesus ascended into heaven before them. That is a lot in a short period of time. A lot of trauma, a lot of unknown, a lot of rumors, a lot of people and forces seeking to get others on their side, a lot of mistrust, a lot of sadness, a lot of loss. We too, followers of Jesus Christ, along with our entire world, have had a lot happen since the last time we gathered physically. The COVID-19 pandemic and all of the trauma and unknown that has emerged through that, a lot of rumors, a lot of people and forces seeking to get others on their side, a lot of mistrust, a lot of sadness, a lot of loss. Yet there they were, those first followers of Jesus Christ, holding fast to the promise that Jesus had proclaimed even amidst the trauma, the unknown, the rumors, the jockeying, the mistrust, the sadness and loss. And here we are, followers and seekers of Jesus Christ, holding fast to the promise that Jesus has proclaimed, even amidst the trauma, the unknown, the rumors, the jockeying, the mistrust, the sadness and the loss. Looking at the scripture passage we read just a bit ago, Suddenly, they heard what sounded like a violent wind rushing from heaven. The noise filled the entire house in which they were sitting. Something appeared and came to rest on the head of each. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as she enabled them. Friends like that first Pentecost, as the Spirit swirled around the gathered people and equipped them with what they needed to go out and live into the next chapter of their call as followers of Christ. We too today are experiencing that same swirling wind, that same spirit who is gathering and equipping us as God's people here and now to go out, to go out into the world in new ways with a new language as the motley crew that we are to proclaim that same promise that we have heard, to point to the same spirit that swirls in our midst, stirring us into faithful action and witness in our world. And we've been equipped by the spirit in a new way in the last year. In February of 2019, and excuse me, in February of 2020, if we had taken a poll and asked how likely are you to enter into worship weekly online, I suspect most of us would have answered unlikely. Sure, it's fun from time to time to wander around on YouTube and see clips and segments from other worship experiences, but us do that every week? We don't have the tools, we don't have the experience, we don't have the language, Yet the Spirit, she swooped in and swirled among us, gifting us with exactly what we needed to live into our mission at that moment. Sure, we didn't get it right all the time. Shoot, we didn't get it right most of the time. There were blunders, technical issues, and growth spaces for all of us. But we showed up. We were faithful and others began to see too the promise that holds us together, that equips us to live into this new day, that even amidst the questions and the fears, moves us to a new chapter in our life together as God's people here in Nashua and beyond. 
Holy Communion, the sacrament that is so central to our life as a church, had to change in order for us to be faithful to our call to care for one another. It had to change a lot. We went from intinction and common cup to no communion for almost six months, and then bi-weekly drive-through communion with prepackaged chalices made of plastic. I will confess, this is one of my top three changes that I still wrestle with, as the bread chiclets are anything but, and the waste created is a lot. But this is the new way for now, not forever, but for now. And it is a way we're invited into in order to care for each other as best we can now. And then how about meeting together for formal business? Council, back in uh, spring of 2020, was meeting weekly via Zoom. Then we transitioned to bi-weekly, and now we're back to monthly with other meetings as needed. It's a lot of screen time. And in the beginning, it was hard to get centered, but we have learned to use the tools that enable us to live our mission together. So much so that we have experienced two true hybrid congregational meetings and we'll experience number three in just a few hours and number four at the end of the month of June. Friends, we have been equipped by the Holy Spirit for such a time as this, just as those first disciples. Sure, we may not have literal tongues of fire on our heads, and we may not literally be speaking another language, but our witness, our gathering, our praying, our caring, our serving out in the world is continuing to be done in a new way every day. And this is who we're called to be. People who follow in the way of Christ. Not in the way of pattern, not in the way of ease, not in the way of expectation. The way of Christ. As the Spirit continues to blow among us, stirring us to living and proclaiming Christ in new ways in our world, I am reminded of a phrase I have used with counsel so much so that most of them right now are probably about to moan, at least inwardly, when they hear it. The phrase is this, and we pivot. As people of God, we have been equipped to let go of that which holds us back that which limits our response, that which keeps us from living our call to witness to the life and love of Christ in this world. We are called to hold fast to the promise we are given in Christ, that he has sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, to lead us, to stir us, to equip us, to guide us in living our call as God's people. This is the promise that we lean into today. This is the promise that goes with us, whether we know it or not. This is the promise that equips us for the next pivot that is ahead of us in our faith journey together. Whether it is learning to worship in new ways, conducting the business of the church, or connecting and sharing our faith out in and with the world, we are held in that promise the promise that in this life we are never alone. That God is with us, guiding and leading us, equipping and sending us out in new ways every day. This is what the story of Pentecost is all about. This is what being people of the Spirit is all about. So as I close today, I wish to share a poem that I came across a couple of weeks ago that I haven't been able to let go of since. It is a poem that doesn't give answers, but asks questions and asks us if we are ready to go, ready to pivot, ready to live as the Spirit guides us. May we believe and may we pivot as we step out in faith. Pentecost by John Birch. When was the last time that we heard the wind of your spirit roar through this place? When was the last time your fire lit up this room? When was the last time we took you at your word 
and met together in expectation of your spirit filling this place and these lives with your glory and power. Lord, you challenge us with Pentecost. Do we believe that this was, was a once in eternity experience never to be repeated? That the Holy Spirit was poured out on your followers for one single purpose and ended her work at that instant? If so, then maybe that is why the church seems so powerless in this age, helpless when faced with the needs, both spiritual and physical, that we see in the world. Lord, as we meet together and celebrate once again the memory of that first Pentecost, may it be for us as it was then, a moment of empowerment, an awareness of your glory in this dark world, a life-changing experience. Amen. Now let us enter into a time of prayer together. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming that we may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speak different languages, proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit so that they may exercise your gracious will in the lives of all people. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in any need this day including all those on our prayer list and those we name aloud. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, fill this congregation with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors and the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all, the conflict in the West Bank and Israel can seem a pretty hopeless situation. We see stalemate caused by the, pre by the absence of peace, dysfunctional politics, the strength of an army, the desperation of a people. But you too lived in this place when it was under occupation and you inspired hope and taught the ways of justice and peace. May true peace be found in this holy land with Israelis and Palestinians, understanding each other's needs, recognizing each other's holy humanity and the world supporting and advocating for both. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of this world, we continue to invite your healing power, your 
healing spirit to swirl through India and all the places that are continuing to be ravaged by the COVID-19 pandemic. Help those who are seeking safety, seeking medical care, seeking respite to find that. And help each one of us be a part of that healing work in this world as your people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of hope, those who have died in you raise their eternal song of praise. We give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of your saints. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, uh, we'll just pause for a second to invite you um, to offer your tithes and your offerings to God. Um, you can do that through at CTK in two different ways. Um, one is to go to our website, ctknashua.org backslash give. You can make a safe and a regular donation there. It can be regular every week, every month, or it can be a one-time gift. And it is a safe and reliable way to do that. You can also simply put a check in the mail and send it to Christ the King Lutheran Church at 3 Lutheran Drive, Nashua, New Hampshire, 03063. We thank you for your faithfulness and commitment as we as a community seek to live into the call that God gives us to proclaim and live the Spirit today. And now, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Worshiping together uh, outside and recording brings a lot of other noises and people in our midst. And we give thanks for that. Um, and also recognize that sometimes it can be hard. So we ask for your patience as we do that. Some other announcements as we close our time together today. We will hold a special congregational meeting, as I said earlier, via Zoom today at 1 p.m. We'll be discerning the stewardship of what we have been gifted with as a result of selling the parsonage. Um, if you are a voting member, you are invited and welcome to come and be a part of the Zoom meeting and then the drive-through voting uh, that will happen between 2.30 and 3.30 um, this afternoon. Uh, you must first be a voting member, and second, you must be present at the Zoom meeting in order to cast a vote later in the afternoon. All of the connection information was included in an email that went out, um, as well as in e-news of late. If you have any questions, reach out quickly um, to Pastor Kim, uh, to me, at pastor at ctknashua.org. And uh, if I get that message uh, before, say, 1230, I can get some information to you. We have need of ushers and greeters, um, and that's one job, usher slash greeter, and some folks to help set up our space outdoors here on Sunday mornings each week. Um, we'll invite you, um, especially those who are setting up the space, to um, join uh, with me and the musician um, of the week uh, at about 8.45 in the morning to set up our space, do a sound check, and make sure that we're ready to go. Um, let me know if you're able to help and we will put you on a schedule. Also throughout the summer, we are always in need of folks to help us keep up with the landscaping of our place. We've had some great help in the beginning of this spring season, um, but if you drive by our space, especially along Broad Street, you can see that nature keeps growing even after we've plucked or pulled or whacked some weeds down. So 
we need throughout the summer weed pullers, rakers, and some weed whackers or choppers, um, especially along that broad street space. Um, let me know if you can help. I can give you more details, let you know where some tools are, and uh, we'll help to keep this space as best and welcoming as we can. Finally, our new church communications and administration lead, um, Kathy Blake, will begin in the office on June 1st. And she will join us at an outdoor worship service in mid-June. Um, so we ask you to hold her and us in prayers during this time of transition. And we look forward to having Kathy join us. Check out our website, ctknashua.org, or our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash ctknashua. Actually, I'm told it's facebook.com forward slash Facebook or CTK Nashua uh, to learn of more things that are going on as things happen and pop up uh, frequently throughout the week. Now receive the blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Christ, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Share the light with this world. Thanks be to God.